Investors request audit of the PS finances. Kenyan officials deny arrest of Binance executive. Bill to ban TikTok signed into law. Uber and Lagos finally agree on data sharing. And Apple reportedly cuts down Vision Pro production. All this and many more on today's episode. Hi, you can call me FK and this is Tech News from Africa and beyond. Investors in the Peer, a once promising fintech API startup, are demanding transparency amidst allegations of financial mismanagement and operational challenges. Following reports of discrepancies between the company's reported bank balance and anticipated expenditures, two investors have initiated requests for a comprehensive audit of the Peer's finances and capital structure. You see, the online space and especially Twitter have been buzzing with so many think pieces on this uh, and hot takes on this issue. <laughs> While some suspicions have been raised, I honestly don't see a request for an audit as something that is heard from the investors. I believe investors have a right to know how their money has been spent, especially now that you are telling them that their money has gone down the drain and they will most likely be receiving pennies on the dollar. Co-founders Michael Oko and Chike Onoye's silence in response to these inquiries has fueled suspicions among stakeholders highlighting growing concerns over the company's ability to effectively manage funds and navigate the competitive fintech landscape. You see, I actually have some thoughts on this and how I feel sometimes developers might not make the best businessmen. But I'm going to be saving my thoughts for another video that is going to be coming out next week on this channel, so you want to watch out for that. The pair's struggles to gain market traction and solidify its business model underscore broader challenges faced by startups in the rapidly evolving technology sector. Despite initial enthusiasm and support from industry players like Flutterwave and Stitch, the company's failure to achieve meaningful adoption of its API solutions has raised questions about its long-term viability. As investors seek answers and accountability, the peer's fate serves as a cautionary tale for aspiring entrepreneurs navigating the complexities of innovation and investment in the digital age. Kenyan authorities have refuted claims that Nadim and Jawala the Binance executive facing tax evasion charges in Nigeria was arrested in Kenya on April 22nd. Despite reports from Nigerian publications suggesting his extradition, Kenyan officials, including spokesperson Resila Onyango, maintain no arrest has been made. And Jawala's case, entangled in extradition requests and international legal complexities, highlights the challenges faced by both Nigerian and Kenyan authorities in the pursuit of justice. Wait, who spread the news that the guy was found in Kenya in the first place? I, I think our findings should start from there. The situation surrounding Anjawala's whereabouts underscores the intricate nature of cross-border legal proceedings reminiscent of past incidents involving extradition controversies. While Nigerian authorities seek Anjawala's return to face charges, Kenyan officials deny any knowledge of his arrest, emphasizing the meticulous legal procedures required for extradition. Amid accusations of tax evasion against Binance executives, including Anjawala, and the unfolding legal saga, the case remains shrouded in uncertainty with implications for both the crypto giant and international law enforcement efforts. President Biden has signed a bill that mandates the sale of TikTok within a year if its Chinese parent company, ByteDance, fails to comply. The bipartisan legislation passed with overwhelming support in both the House and Senate allows ByteDance nine months to divest TikTok with a possible 90-day extension. Failure to do so would lead to the app's ban in the US, highlighting escalating concerns over national security and data privacy regarding Chinese-owned tech companies. Okay, so while I don't find uh, that any app that people are finding beneficial should be banned by the government, I think it's rather hard that uh, TikTok is not available in China, at least not as TikTok, but as Douyin, a version that people have claimed is less of a brain rot. TikTok has announced plans to challenge the bill, denouncing it as unconstitutional. The social media platform, which boasts millions of American users, argues that it plays a vital role in supporting creators and small businesses in the United States. CEO Zhu Zichu has reaffirmed TikTok's commitment to contesting the ban reflecting broader tensions surrounding Chinese tech firms operating in global markets amidst increasing regulatory scrutiny and data security concerns. 
You see, aside all the talk about the fairness of the threat of TikTok being banned or not, I think the two uh, people that will be most happy about this is Mark Zuckerberg and YouTube. Looks like they will finally have the opportunity to buy it instead of having to compete with it, which I think has been a losing game so far. I would like YouTube to buy it though, because I think if they do, they will finally be able to shut down YouTube shots, which has been very, very annoying. I, I find YouTube shots very, very annoying and I think it's messing up the whole YouTube brand. That's just me though. Uber and the Lagos state government have come to terms after a prolonged disagreement over data sharing, which stemmed from the government's efforts to enforce a 2020 agreement. Initially, Uber resisted the government's request citing surveillance and privacy concerns, while competitors like Bolt complied. This led to the impounding of Uber drivers' cars, casting uncertainty over the negotiation process. However, both parties have now reached a compromise, resulting in the release of impounded vehicles within 72 hours, as confirmed by Ola Sokomi, Lagos State's Director of Transport Operations. Despite this resolution, Driver discontent lingers with demands for Uber to lower its 25% commission rate and complaints about the increased challenges of driving amid long fuel queues and rising inflation, which continue to impact earnings. Despite reports of a 10% commission increase for Uber drivers, Ibrahim Ayuade, the General Secretary of the App-Based Transporters of Nigeria, refuted this, dismissing it as a short-lived promotional campaign. The ongoing discontent among drivers underscores the complexities faced by ride hailing companies in balancing driver welfare and operational efficiency amidst regulatory and economic challenges. Apple is reportedly revising down its shipment forecast for the Vision Pro headset due to declining demand. Analyst Ming Chi Kuo suggests that Apple now expects to sell only 400,000 to 450,000 units in 2024. A significant decrease from earlier estimates of 700 to 800,000 units. The $3,500 Vision Pro failed to meet sales expectations, prompting Apple to reassess its headset roadmap, potentially delaying plans for a lower cost mixed reality headset beyond 2025. I don't know anyone out there who shares the same sentiment with me, but I still see VR as a hard sell. The adoption of virtual reality is still more in the realm of sci-fi than it is close to our actual world. The adoption of a very heavy headset that has you pinching in the air and alienating you from everyone around you, I don't think it's something that people are ready to jump and embrace right now. And at the price point of $3,500, I think it will find a better product market fit within people that use it for work, you know, people like doctors, engineers and the likes. The underwhelming performance of the Vision Pro has raised concerns within Apple and the industry as a whole. While the headset impressed early adopters with its advanced technology, it struggled to retain users beyond the initial return period. Analysts warn that the lackluster demand for certain VR and AR components such as micro OLED displays could hinder their adoption in future devices, posing challenges for mass production in the sector. You see, this is the first time I'm seeing Apple's fancy branding, powerful engineering and promise of exclusivity not working for people at all, even the Apple addicts. So it's speed run time. One, two, three, let's go. Kenya to regulate cryptocurrency. The Kenyan government is taking steps to regulate the cryptocurrency market, forming a team to develop rules for cryptocurrencies and related services amid concerns over rising online scams. This move follows a proposal to impose a 3% tax on crypto trading and comes after warnings about the risks associated with unregulated financial activities, including money laundering and terrorism financing. Looks like crypto can't just seem to escape regulation, no matter how much it tries. Nvidia acquires AI workload management startup Run AI for $700 million. Nvidia has acquired Run AI, a Tel Aviv based company specializing in AI hardware infrastructure management, for a reported $700 million. The deal aims to enhance NVIDIA's DGX Cloud AI platform by integrating Run AI's products and capabilities, facilitating efficient management of AI workloads across multiple data center locations, according to statements from both companies. Is NVIDIA resting at all? Their CEO seems to be everywhere presenting one product or another. He was still at OpenAI uh, recently uh, pre presenting the new H H1, I think H H200, not H100, H the new H200. Well, I can't, I can't blame them. The AI hype is on and they have to milk it as much as possible. Spotify CEO Daniel Ek, surprised by how much laying off 1,500 employees 
negatively affected the streaming giant's operations. Spotify CEO Daniel Ek had announced a major round of layoffs in December, cutting 1,500 jobs or 17% of the workforce, aiming for efficiency, but faced unexpected operational challenges in filling the gaps, impacting performance targets despite record profits and revenue growth in the first quarter of 2024. CEOs can be very funny at times. You fired 1,500 people and it was very good for your books. Now you're surprised that things are not running smoothly <laughs> as they used to be. <laughs> I beg, spare me the tears. Block lets Square merchants convert a part of their daily sales to Bitcoin. Block, the company behind Square and Cash App, unveiled a new program enabling merchants utilizing Square solutions to convert a portion of their daily sales into Bitcoin. Starting in the US, this feature will transfer 1 to 10% of daily sales to merchants' personal Cash App accounts converting the amount into Bitcoin by day's end, with Block taking a 1% fee per conversion. It's now time for Money Talk. Let's see how much cash African startups were able to grab this week. Three African startups secure 200000 each as Madika announces first African investment. Madika's seed investment program provided up to 200000 each to three African startups aiming to support underrepresented founders and address challenges in the African startup ecosystem. South African edtech startup Hyperion Dev raises $5 million to expand its operations. Hyperion Dev, a South African edtech startup, has raised 95 million rand, an equivalent of $5 million, totaling its growth investment to 595 million rand, an equivalent of $31.1 million, with plans to expand operations in South Africa and the UK. And that's a wrap for Tech News this week. Be sure to join us next week for another episode. And remember to subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. I remain your bro in tech, FK. You see, I have... I have... I actually... <laughs> Nadim and Jawala. <laughs> and Jawala. Binance against... 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 Uber and the late... And the late... And the late... Oh, Lily. So, it's speedrun time. Let's go. One, two, three, go. No, no. Let's go. One, two, three, go.